Hey guys, how you guys doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video that I've made for you guys. Before we start the video though, I'm gonna take a moment to ask you to do something for me. Smash that thumbs up button. It helps me out immensely. Also, smash the join button. It's not gonna hurt you. It's $1.99 and it helps the channel out a lot. And as always, hit the subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and notification button. Uh, so that way you get notified of every new video we put out today. Now, today's video is going to be talking about independent distributions. I'm going to give you a couple of them to look at. And if you have looked at them and used them, hey, great. Comment down below. Otherwise, stay tuned. Maybe you'll find one on here that you want to look at. Independent distributions, when one thinks of that, what do they think of? Well, basically, it's one that's built from scratch. It's not a fork of, you know, or a respin is another popular term that's used out there to simply say it's a fork. But an independent distribution generally is a custom built Linux distribution that is compiled from source uh, and they add their own package managers or another package manager from another distribution that works well. Um, and then they add their programs themselves and they maintain it independently of any other distributions. That's to me what makes an independent distribution. Now, the list that we have that I've curated on here are pretty well known ones that are rock solid and have their uses. So let's go ahead and take a look at them. The first one I'm going to look at is 4M Linux. Now, 4M Linux, what is the cornerstone of 4M Linux is, and literally what the 4M stands for are the M's that it, are the hallmarks of what its distribution is touting. Um, it's a general purpose Linux distribution, but it's really focusing on maintenance, multimedia, mini servers, and mystery. Now, as far as maintenance is concerned, of course, that it has a live rescue CD that you can use in, you know, in it, of course. Multimedia, of course, it's got a full support for a huge number of, you know, image, audio, and video formats. So all the free codecs are installed uh, out of the bat on there. Uh, the mini servers are actually the DNS, FTP, HTTP, MySQL, SMTB, SSH, and I believe Telenet are all installed out of the box. It might be a couple more, but pretty much so all the little servers are there. And as far as mystery is concerned, well, that M stands... Stands for basically gaming. It's, there, it's the only way that they could incorporate gaming into it. So, you know, it comes with a bunch of the classic, you know, Linux games installed out of the bot out of the out of the box for you, you know. And, you know, it's not a huge ISO file, so therefore that's what, you know, you know, is is nice about it. Uh um it actually it uses um, the JSON window manager um, and it has a, it's actually originated in Poland and it has a, a desktop ISO, a live medium ISO, which that's the rescue CD one and the server ISO that has all of the actual servers, you know, built into it that you'll ever need. Now, one of the caveats about it is when you go to install the packages, like when you boot into it and you install it on your hard drive, you go into the actual menu, you'll see, you know, um, packages installed, you know, on there. But the thing is, is they're actual links. When you click on them, it'll actually launch a terminal and it'll download and install the package. And then once you want to uh, actually uh, use a package, you just go back to that same thing, click on it, and then the package will run. So that's where... It does it, and you also you can do like do it through GNOME extensions as well. Um, so that, that it's it's a little different to use, but nonetheless, um, you can actually get a quality Linux distribution. It's very independent and lightweight right there with you know with 4M Linux. So that's a look at 4M Linux. Next, we're going to look at PC 
Linux OS. Now, I recently did a review of this distribution. It's known as the Boomer distribution. Now, PC Linux OS is definitely one that's been around for a very, very long time. I remember using it back in back way, way back in the days when it first came out. Um, what made it so different and what make keeps it independent is well, actually, what made it so different it is that it was an independent one. Two, um, it added support out of the box for many of your sound cards back then. That was an issue. A lot of people don't realize it today. You can go to the store now and buy whatever you want and for a PC or a motherboard, throw it in your Linux box and everything pretty much so works 100, almost like 98% of the time. Very rarely do you have issues outside of a couple of, you know, Wi-Fi drivers, that kind of stuff. Back in the day, it was a huge issue to find hardware that actually worked. Well, PC Linux solved that. They included a lot of support for sound cards and graphic cards back then, which graphics to this day still seems to be a problem with some NVIDIA drivers, but for the most part, you're, it's not nor near what it used to be. A lot of people don't understand that. And so it was also one of the ones that was pushing the envelope on customizing Linux and theming it to be a little bit more of a darker color and stuff like that. So, you know, it was always on the edge. It was back in the day, the edge type distribution so uh it's gained a lot of fame over the years over that but it's also got left in the dust as you know more and more forks of arch and things came out and it kind of got buried but nonetheless you can get it in a kde plasma uh, desktop environment mate and xfce desktops um it actually is still supported and used to this day so that's another reason why we're talking about it even though it's an oldie but goodie um it uses the app package management system and the Synaptic Package Manager to install applications. Uh, you can also, you know, find RPM packages in its, in its repositories as well. Uh, so you can add them that way. But one of the coolest things that it has and why it's on this list is because it has the My Live CD script. Now, the My Live CD script, what that does is it basically does what was called a system, a remaster sys back in the day. It, there was a program called Remaster Sys where you could download this program and it created like a snapshot of your entire um, hard drive. It included your application, documents, everything. It made a complete snapshot of that, compressed it, and made it into an actual ISO that you could put on a CD and distribute it to your friends and everything else. So you can make it completely agnostic from specifically to you. Just leave it as a created as the username being user, login being user or whatever and then they can go in and create their own thing and edit that and make it their own and set up your and you can customize it to look however you want and then that was what you're distributing well this is kind of like what this script does it's a script that does that and it probably does it using uh dd um for your for your command line to do it and it will actually make a live bootable iso from your actual um Hard drive. Now, I strongly suggest that you do this prior to installing a bunch of pictures and all your documents and that kind of stuff on it. If you're going to try to make a, a, a redistributable, you know, version of it so that it's basically a vanilla setup of your customized desktop after you're all done. So it just has your customizations and that's it. Now, once you do that, start adding documents and your general use files, then you can do it again and get a larger pen drive to encompass that it has just that on it. So that way you can roll back to whatever you need and keep that as that. Now, that is the coolest caveat. And I think a lot of distributions would benefit from having this actual script to work to make things happen for your, you know, to, to, to make it a, a, a replicable you know, distribution. So in a way it was doing what Nix OS did long before Nix OS did. <laughs> so that's kind of cool when you think about it that way. It's the granddaddy, but that's why it's called the boomer distribution. So that's PC Linux OS. If you used it, I also did a review on it. So go and check that out. Um, if you've actually, you know, uh, 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 seen or use PC Linux OS, let me know, man. Tell me all about it, man. I, it was a great distribution. I rocked that for the longest time. And, you know, I really, really enjoyed it, you know. Uh, and, and when I did the distribution, it was kind of nostalgic for me, or the review of the distribution was nostalgic for me. So either way, guys, check out PC Linux OS. Tell me what you guys think about it. Tell me, uh, you know, any thoughts you may have on it or uh, 
you know, any issues that you had with it. Yeah, let me know all about it, all right? Now, the next one we're going to take a look at is going to be Void Linux. That's right. Void Linux. There you go. Now, for Void Linux, well, basically, what can I say, man? I used this one a while ago. In fact, um, in using Void Linux, I actually made a uh-oh um, uh -oh with it where I actually wiped it off my hard drive on accident. I was actually using it for production because it's very stable even though it's a rolling release version, but uh, I was using it and I was installing another one, another distribution that I was going to be doing a review of on hardware alongside of it. And I wound up wiping the whole hard drive. I thought I was doing a side by side, but I wasn't. And I was tired when I was installing it and I wound up wiping my Void Linux and it was a calamity, but I never went back to it. But I actually drove it for about seven months, six months. And I will tell you, it, it's independent because it's not a fork of. It uses, it's a stable rolling release. So all the packages and the programs that come in it are actually stable. They don't break things, any of that kind of stuff. It is a system D free operating system. It uses the run it actual system in its system, which is fantastic. Um, it has its own package manager called XBPS. And the syntax for that is similar to apt and DNF, you know, XBPS install xbps upgrade xbps update xbps remove you know that kind of stuff and you know it's got all the packages you'll ever need in its repository but i think to me one of the things that also makes it an actual standout to me is that if you go to the documentation in its website Um, uh, let's go here to the documentation page. I want to show you this. It is very thorough. It is completely thorough from firewalls all the way down to graphics drivers. Um, also, uh, desktop environments. Uh, there is a section in here that explains the package manager here, but there's also a section for, if you want to put Wayland on here, you can do it. Uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. I have to pay attention here. And it's a walkthrough on how to do Wayland right here. It's a walkthrough on how to install Wayland on here. So, I mean, it's that forward thinking. It's really a quality, um, independent distribution. To me, in this list, it is probably what I would rate as my number one because of its thoroughness of documentation, its speed. It is bar none, fast as hell, very lightweight as well. And... It's just solid. I mean, it's really a solid distribution. I never had it break any packages at all while I used it. And so that is it for Void Linux. If you've ever used it, talk about it. They have a great community um, it, for, for Void Linux. They also are very protective of it as well. Um, they're, you know, they're, there's a Void gang out there, so to speak. But either way, you know, it's, it's great. I, I can't knock it in any way, shape, or form. So give it a try if you haven't. If you have, tell me about it. Also, once you give it a try, tell me about your, you know, your experiences with it as well. Also, if there's anything that you've had issues with and you've had a fix for it, comment that down below. Let people know. Um, other than that, that's Void Linux in a nutshell. Try it. Write it. Enjoy it. The next one we're going to look at is probably the granddaddy of them all, of all the independent distros. And it's also that one that, there's a lot of freaking, you know, arguments over and, you know, this, that, and another about it. But it's definitely the caveat one of all, and it's Gen 2 Linux. Now, what can I tell you about Gen 2 Linux? Gen 2 Linux is, well, let me put it to you this way. If you thought you knew Linux, you've been using Linux 5, 6, hey, even probably 15, 20 years. If you've never installed Gentoo Linux, you will realize really quickly once you start installing Gentoo Linux that you don't know shit about Linux. Um, and that there's a whole lot in Linux that goes into it that you might take for granted. But when you have to start building all these things and setting these things up, that's when it becomes a reality. And I'm going to tell you right now, I have installed Gentoo Linux twice in my lifetime. It takes a lot of time. You have to follow the Gen 2 handbook. The Gen 2 handbook is very, very thorough. You basically go to the gen2linux.org or 
whatever the heck it is that the the web the the actual link is. And then you go to the to the installation, and then you go to where it tells you the step one is download the the actual uh, uh, live CD. You could use any live CD for whichever, as long as it's a live CD. Um, and then you go to the handbook and start following the steps in the handbook to do it. Now, once you go to the handbook, what you're doing is, is at the bottom here, like we'll go back to the beginning. I've already gone through this a little bit. So you are here where it goes into the about Gen 2 Linux installation. This is what you want to read. You go through all this stuff step by step. And then you move down here at the bottom, choosing the media. This is where you can choose the actual minimal installation, the live CD, the live DVD, and then the different stages of what you want to do for, you know, your, your builds and how to get those. And then you click, once you go through this and you do what you decide what you do after reading this, move on, go to your next one to configure the network and you follow each step, step by step till you're done. It will take time. It will take a lot of time. And once you get done, you're going to get just a base gen 2 system upon which you install your desktop environment and any other applications that you use which are done through the um portage package management system where you emerge things and so you learn how to do that and during the course of the build you also learn how to set um make flags and use flags that help you for you know installing applications and speeding them up also you can actually uh, enable and disable certain modules in the kernel at the kernel level. That's why it is considered to me the greatest independent distribution because you literally build it yourself to what you want. And it, it does have its own package management system. And uh, you basically are putting in the box what you want in that box. And that is the greatest Linux distribution you can actually have. Now, I'm sure that Josh and... Tyler are both proud of me for saying that because it is the absolute truth. It is the best Linux distribution out there for you to have because it's what you put in it. So therefore anything that is wrong with it or lacking of is nobody's fault, but your own. And it's simple to add it truthfully through the portage system. But nonetheless, you go through the painstaking task of building the system from the ground up. So it teaches you Linux. It teaches you what to do what not to do in both those times that i've installed it it was four or five attempts each time so i still make mistakes with it a lot of people make mistakes with it and those two people i mentioned definitely um are people to good sources to, to tap into if you are interested in building gen 2 and installing gen 2 as your uh in, independent uh distribution um to use for your linux daily driver so that being said, that is a look at some very quality independent Linux distributions. Uh, I'm going to take a moment here, you know, to tell you if you've used any of those, comment down below what your experience was, what any failures were, and what you did to circumvent those failures. Also, uh, like, take a minute, as I mentioned before, subscribe to the channel. It helps out. If you can't or don't want to do the YouTube thing, Hey, that's great. I've had a couple people that went over to buy me coffee. They bought me a coffee over there and make monthly donations through there. Also, Patreon is, is another one that I'm available on to. Either way, I'm humbly and gratefully thankful for your doing that. I greatly appreciate it. It helps make better and better videos. And also, you know, it helps support the channel. Now, until then, y'all keep doing what you do. Keep on Linuxing. Stay blessed. Have a great day, and I will see you in the very next one.